What's up guys? It's Friday and so you know what time it is. It's time for What The Fitness. Let's get them. So this is a video from Mike Rashid. Now, I don't know if this is a conflict of interest, but I'm gonna disclose the COI. I met Mike a couple times, always super nice to me. That being said, part of me is like, I really have a hard time going hard on people who are nice, but this got sent to me, so by a lot of people. So we're gonna see what Mike had to say. You've been eating a lot of carbs, you're looking a little fluffy but it doesn't have to be like that. You can eat this and look like this with this. This is alchemy. This is nutrient conversion technology. It's converting carbohydrates into glucose. This is what the body needs to burn off as fuel, just like gasoline in an automobile. So get you some alchemy, quit being a fast. All right, I got you. Okay, let's look up what alchemy is real quick. I'm guessing it's a glucose disposal agent. So first off, all carbohydrates get converted to glucose. Well, that's not entirely true. All starches get converted to glucose. All carbohydrates get converted to their constituent monosaccharides. Basically, glucose and fructose and galactose. That's pretty much what they break down into. I don't know how increasing the conversion of carbohydrates into glucose is gonna help, but let's, I'm, I'm guessing this is a, a, some kind of um, glucose disposal agent. The other thing, nutrient conversion technology. So I wanna point out a nebulous term. That means absolutely nothing. There is no objective way to measure nutrient conversion. And so if you cannot objectively measure something, it means nothing. So on their website, it says, nutrient conversion technology was used to describe the idea of properly absorbing carbohydrates in order to control insulin response while effectively helping to burn fat and build muscle. Wow, kind of sounds like a panacea. Just does all of the things. Our one-of-a-kind technology was created with a distinctively designed formula that helps you build muscle using carbohydrate absorption. In this piece, we'll dive into how Alchemy NCT can help Probably use carbohydrates throughout your workout and training process. What makes you think that you aren't properly absorbing carbohydrates? By the way, if you're not properly absorbing carbohydrates, it means you're getting less calories in and you're less likely to gain body fat. And as far as muscle building goes, there's no evidence that carbohydrates help directly with muscle building. So I'm gonna be interested to see like how they run this. Oh, and the first ingredient, Chromax, which is chromium picolinate. Cool story, chromium picolinate was around back in like 1999 and 2000 when it was marketed for this exact same reason because it actually increases the insulin response. In people who are metabolically compromised or have metabolic syndrome, it can increase the insulin response. In healthy people, it was shown to do nothing. So this is an example of a supplement that died because it didn't work. And then here comes the supplement industry 20 years later, digging up the zombie supplement and being like, look at this new thing we found. It's not new, it's been around for two decades. Didn't work then, doesn't work now. Pro Cincy, a patented extract, water-soluble cinnamon that has three times better activity compared to normal water extract. Okay, so there's some evidence that cinnamon extract can improve insulin sensitivity, cool. Here's the problem with improving insulin sensitivity. You don't get to pick whether you're improving it in muscle or adipose. Increased insulin sensitivity is going to dispose more glucose. You only can put so much in muscle. You can only put so much glucose in muscle and glycogen. If you're increasing insulin sensitivity and you already have full muscle glycogen stores, guess where it's gonna go? The only other peripheral tissue it can go, adipose tissue. I'm not saying this stuff's gonna make you fat, but it's, it's, not, it's not preferentially targeting muscle. People think about insulin sensitivity as a good thing, and it is a good thing. But did you, I just read a paper on adipose tissue metabolism the other day. People who have more fat cells are actually more insulin sensitive than people who have less fat cells because smaller adipocytes are more insulin sensitive. People think about insulin sensitivity over, only in muscle. A lot of your body's capacity for insulin sensitivity is determined by your adipose tissue. And in fact, people who get really overweight but don't have any metabolic syndrome, they're the ones who have more adipocytes because they have a higher tolerance for becoming insulin insensitive relative to people who have less adipocytes because at the same fat mass, they have smaller adipocytes, they have more places to put fatty acids, and therefore their blood sugar and their blood lipids are not gonna rise as quickly. So again, this don't make no damn sense. Okay, NC2 is spelled I-N-S-E-A number two helps combat the harmful effects associated with overconsumption of added sugars in our natural daily diet. It helps maintain good glycemic health, an all-natural ingredient that transforms dietary carbohydrates into glucose. 
it has been shown to reduce glycemic stress by up to 48%. In a study conducted on 175 patients with type 2 diabetes, NC2 was shown to help reduce glycated hemoglobin. So that's HbA1c. As a result, post-meal blood glucose levels were reduced along with insulin levels. You got one ingredient, chromium picolinate, which is purported to increase insulin. But now this ingredient is supposed to decrease insulin. It's like they just started throwing shit at a wall to see what sticks. Let me, let's actually go look up this. So they actually cited it. This could be a very bad idea for them because, I'm gonna go look up the study, wait a minute. So they cite a number for the study, but then you can't go look up the study. Like, hold up, so there's a six citing it. I can't click the six, and if I scroll down, oh, wouldn't you know it? There's no actual citations. So guys, I don't know who put this website together, but I know that like science is probably pretty tough. If you're going to like cite a number of a claim of a study, you then therefore either make that clickable or you include the citations in the footer of the page. Just FYI. Glucovantage. So I don't actually know what the actual ingredient was because they didn't say what it was. I don't really care. It makes no sense when now you're saying, okay, we got this one thing that's gonna increase insulin and we got this other thing that's gonna decrease insulin. What are we trying to do here, man? Also known as, okay, so this is berberine. Is it, okay, so this is a metabolite of berberine, this glucovantage. Supports healthy blood sugar levels, promotes insulin sensitivity, improves body composition. So there is a little bit of evidence that says berberine may help reduce body fat levels, like very slightly. Okay, cool, reasonable ingredient then. But again, it also improves insulin sensitivity by decreasing fasting insulin and decreasing the insulin response. So again, of all the ingredients so far, this is the best one I've seen, but it doesn't make sense in the context of, well, I don't even know what this product is trying to do because it seems to be all over the map. Banaba leaf or 10% corosolic acid. Okay, I'm not familiar with this ingredient, but let's see what it says. Has a number of anti-diabetic properties while offering a number of other health benefits, including controlling blood sugar, antioxidant activity, curb obesity, can reduce the risk of heart disease, protect against kidney damage. One study showed that individuals receiving corosolic acid had lower blood sugar levels for one to two hours after performing an oral glucose tolerance test. Again, why this sh make no damn sense? Because you are saying it's nutrient conversion technology. It's gonna help you convert carbohydrates to glucose. But then you're saying it's lowering the glucose response. What ha ha happened? What happened? I don't understand. Mike's always been very nice to me, but the claims in this particular product and the claims that he is making don't make sense. The product ingredients don't make sense based on the claims. And oh, they said muscle building. Where did we hear any proposed mechanism of how this will build muscle. Because if it's going to build muscle, either one of two things has to happen. Protein synthesis has to grow up, or protein degradation has to go down, or a combination of the two. None of those ingredients affect those. So where is this muscle building claim? Again, you have to be very careful when products basically claim to be a panacea. Okay, they fix everything. Now I'm not saying that some of the ingredients in here are bad. Berberine, cinnamon, maybe even corosolic acid, those things appear to possibly improve glycemic response. So maybe they're reasonable ingredients to include, especially if people have compromised insulin sensitivity. But it's not gonna just magically take the carbs you eat and turn you into a jacked, lean person. That's not how this works. And oh, by the way, carbs don't make you fluffy. Eating too much overall makes you fluffy. All right, guys, if you like the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel. And if you like supplements, that don't make insane claims and have ingredient profiles that actually make sense, check out my line, Outwork Nutrition. Yes, I sell supplements, but if you look at our website, you can see our citations, and sure enough, we list the actual references so you can go check it out for yourself. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Catch you next week.